Hi, this is a quick flyby on the new Google Classroom. And there's a lot of big changes that have happened and some schools are directly on this version and some schools are slowly transitioning. Now that my school district is on the new Google Classroom beta version, I'm gonna give a quick flyby on what to expect. So in the past you had a stream and in the stream you would create all your posts. And so now when you go down here on the bottom right and hit the plus, you now see that you only have an announcement and a reuse post. And the reason they do that is because they want to clean up the stream a little bit. And so everything is still chronological on the stream. Everything that's created will appear here. So that way you can see all that's going on in your classroom. And when students post and they may or may not have the freedom to do so, depending on what settings you do, when the students post, it appears here in the stream, just like it always did in Google Classroom in the past. Right now I'm looking at the teacher screen and You'll notice at the top, it goes from stream to classwork. And the classwork tab allows you to streamline and organize your resources or your assignments much better. So I'm gonna click on the classwork button and you'll see right away that you have a create button right here. And so when I click on create, I have the option to create an assignment question or reuse post. And I can also create topics here. And so they've just moved this button over to the classwork tab and made it here. So that way any assignments that you create will appear here. And you'll notice that I have these brown bars and these are just the topics. So when I create a new topic, I'm going to see that it'll create a bar just like it just did a little bit ago. I'll hit add and it will create another section. Now, right now, that section is down here. And at any time, if I wanna move a topic up, I'm able to move it up along the lines here. Now, you can't just click and drag it. You do have to use the three dots and move it to where you want, okay? All right, so I have a new topic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create an assignment and we'll fly through this really quick. I'll do a typical assignment where you would just include a document in the assignment and I'm gonna include the topic as new topic. And this screen will look exactly the same as what you had had in the past. So nothing has changed here, nothing new on this screen. Here we go. Okay, so to give a quick overview of what I did, I have it assigned to this class. You can still choose which classrooms you want it to go to by hitting this down arrow. You can still uh, select which specific students you want to send an assignment to. So that hasn't changed. I gave it a title. I gave some quick instructions. I set a due date, and I chose the topic as a new topic because that's what I created a little bit ago. I added an attachment from Google Drive, and all it was was a document. I also created a copy for each student. You still have the option to assign it now, schedule it, or save it as a draft. I'm gonna go ahead and assign it now. So that way you can see this process. Now, these rules also apply to questions and assignments. Doesn't matter which one you start with. You'll notice that now this assignment went under the new topic tab in the classwork section. I'm gonna go over to the stream and you will see that it is part of the stream. And if I want to expand it out and see this assignment and I click on it, it goes directly to it. It's just a more compact, condensed version of the stream than it was in the past. If I go to the classwork tab, that's where they are organized by topic specifically. I can see what's going on with the calendar as well and see when assignments are coming up for this class. The students have a classwork tab as well. So when I visit the classwork tab, you'll see that it's organized just like the teacher has set up. So if they want the new topic on the top, it'll appear that way for students. You'll see that some assignments are grayed out and those that mean that they have already been turned in. The ones that are still solid in color have not yet been completed and turned in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this assignment as a student. So I open up the assignment just like I would have done in the past. If I want to actually view the assignment, I click on view assignment and then I'm ready to open the document and start working. I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, now that I am finished, I will close out of the document or you can use the turn in button, but I already have this Google Classroom tab open. So it simplifies things if I just close out of that one and then hit turn in and turn in. Now that I've completed that assignment, I'm going to go back to my teacher mode and I can see this specific assignment from here, or I can go to the classwork tab. Either way is appropriate. When I open the assignment, I can see that two are done. I had this set as each student gets a copy. And this is where the new Google Classroom really shines because you get almost like a preview mode and you're able to grade the assignment 
and flip through each one very quickly. This works whether it's a Google Doc or whether it is a Google Slides presentation or even a video. It's fantastic. And so now I can see that this is the student that I'm looking at right now. I can see their response. If I want to give a comment, I can give a comment. If I want to give a grade, I can give a grade. There's lots of different options here. It automatically places me in suggestion mode. So when I start typing, it puts things in as a suggestion instead of an actual change. And so when I hit the enter button, it adds the comment off to the side here to add start typing. If I wanted to add just a plain comment, I could still hit the comment button up here. I'm going to have to click on the three dots to actually see it and click on the speech bubble with the plus sign. And it's going to allow me to leave a comment specifically about purple and I can leave my comment. But automatically, I'm in suggestion mode and not editing the document. Over here on the right-hand side, I am free to give a grade. If I want to change the total point value, I can do so. Let's say I only want this to be worth, we'll say, 20 points. I don't have to do that from Google Classroom itself. It does it for the entire assignment for all the students. I'm going to give an 18 out of 20 here, and I can give a private comment. So I've posted it, I can also return it. So I'm going to use the return button up here, give it back to the student. Once I have returned it, it labels it as returned, and I can go to the next student by clicking right here. It shows that this student has turned it in. I'm ready to grade this one as well. Now the private comments are very different than the comments directly within the document. The private comments are what appear in Google Classroom and the comments within the document, well, they appear in the document. I'm going to go ahead and return this assignment. So it's fantastic because you are able to, at any time, switch between students all within this one screen. A lot less load time than in the past where you had to open every single document separately. I also do not have to flip back to Google Classroom itself and do all the grading from here. I can use that screen to do the grading and the additional comments. When I click here, I can see that the private comments were added to each assignment. When I look at the student side of things, I can see the comment from the teacher and I can see the return assignment. And that is a quick flyby on the new version of Google Classroom and how to get started creating assignments 